All right. Hi, hi uh, Twitch. <laughs> it's YouTube today. Oh. <laughs> What's up, stream? What's up, stream? Chris says hello. Hello, I'm good, I'm good. Is that, um, that's Paulina, right? Yeah. Yeah. Are you going to paint with us today, Paulina? Well, last week on the stream, we talked about um, doing a painting of Venice because I was inspired by um, one of Mel Staben's uh, paintings. And um, so this week, I worked on a few Venice, you know, working with some sketches and some thumbnails. Let me just get this taped up here. This one in pink here is one that I... <laughs> that I normally don't paint like this, but it was one that I did this week that I was just kind of for fun to do something different. And um, so I'll just put it up here while I'm getting my, uh, my sketch together. But this is the one that I did that we're gonna do today. And you can see there's a lot of, um, oh, you're gonna paint today, good. There's a lot of, um, little details in here that I've edited out basically all this most of this bridge stuff so we're just going to do the background buildings and the boats and um, this is another version that I did of a different photo of Venice this week and this one is horrible I mean I love the colors up here but then when I got down into here um, things kind of fell apart on me so I may do something with that later, but um, I liked the, the color palette. So let me grab my um, board. And this is the final sketch that I did. Uh, just this is just on really thin 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 sketchbook paper so it just shows you kind of you know a little study for this painting and this is what we'll do today on watercolor paper so um, I'll leave that there and I'm gonna go grab the photocopy of my sketch real quick Christopher's out there making popcorn. Okay. So this is a photo of the sketch. And you can see how I just simplified it down <clears throat> into a horizon line in the background. And just a few little tiny, hardly anything for details of those buildings back there and then back here is that big famous church in Venice so I just put a couple of little cupolas there and then just a few you know it's just a silhouette back there so um, in the photo you can see it clearer see the cupolas and hopefully you all were able to get the photos either on Instagram, I sent them on Instagram, and also they're on the Facebook page of Sketchbook, our Sketchbook Sunday group. Sketchbook Sunday watercolor group. So if you just draw two little cupolas, and then a couple of rooftops, a couple of dark dashes for windows, and then just, you know, kind of a, a jaggedy little indication there of some rooftops way in the background. That's all you need. And I, what I did to get this, see? Nothing to it. And 
when you get to be a master, you can do it very carefully and, and make it, you know, more accurate to the scene. But you don't need a lot of details back there. So that's what we're going to do. Now I'm going to draw mine on my sketchbook. Well, actually, I'm going to draw it on watercolor paper. So. Go ahead and maybe I can move this paper right onto my other board so it's not. Let me just put it right here. And I think everybody can see it. And maybe next week we'll meet on Zoom. Just because I think it's easier for everyone to interact on Zoom. And um, I think it'll be fun to try it. So next week what I'll do is I'll put the Zoom code in Instagram and also on our, on our Facebook group page. So if you want to join the Zoom next week, that's what we'll do. And I'm going to adjust this maybe down just a tad. Well, I think that's fine the way it is because we really don't need it to see all that sky anyway. All right. <clears throat> Oops, I'm going to turn that off. Um, Zoom might be fun. Yeah, I think it will be. I need a little fresh water here. Okay, so let's get this. So here's your distance, your horizon line there in the distance. We're, I'm going to go fast across here to indicate some of these buildings. This page is actually a little wider than what I need. So I think what I'm going to do is <clears throat> crop it down a little bit. Well, no, it's, I think it's okay. I'll just leave it. Okay, so about... Yeah, uh, I've done that a million times. I've put my paintbrush in my um, coffee and, okay, so maybe I'll make these cupolas here. There's one. And this next one is bigger. And it's kind of hard to draw around a rounded cupola. These actually have a slight dome shape to them. Well, one does anyway. The other one is, yeah, I guess it is about the same proportion dome-wise. This one has another little thing here and then there. And the less detail you put on there, the better, because it's just a silhouette in the background anyway. Don't get bogged down in that. And if you have trouble making a dome, a good way to do it is to um, make a circle. So just make a circle, right? And then there it is. There's your dumb. Actually, I'm going to zoom this in a little more. I guess I should draw with a darker pencil so you can see. There's the circle. Well, if you drew the whole thing, that would be your circle. And then
in your dome shape. And like I said, this one has a slight, um, you know, it's not totally rounded, but it has a slight, it's not totally circular on top. It looks like it has a slight curvature to the top here. Like it's not a basketball round, but more like that. Okay, so anyway, you do two of those shapes, and I guess this large one is in front. And then, actually, it doesn't look like I've, I haven't really drawn that tall enough, proportionally for what's going on back here, but it is in the distance, I don't really. Then there's that huge front of the church over here and there's a bunch of steps and things and a couple more rooftops back here and um, if you want to put in some arches for these things just a couple and maybe one here and that's all you need there's another little tower of some sort here. And you can get really accurate studies of this of um, you know pictures of all these things if you want if you want to paint in that way but for what we're doing we just want a silhouette of this background and I think the less you put back there the better and then we want so we've got our little silhouette here of the background shapes maybe I can just darken that up in my sketch a little bit so you can see it And hopefully that helps. And then, okay, Tong said she's not going to be here today. All right, Tong, no worries. And um, <clears throat> so the hard part with Venice is painting these boat shapes. Um, they're not easy because they're very, you know, they have a very unique shape and, um, so I'll just try to, try to walk you through it. So I would say about, um, a third of the way from the bottom of your page of your Paper. So this is your outline here. So if you divided this into roughly thirds, so you've got your horizon line on the top third. On the bottom third, right there, that's where about the bottom of your boat should be. So I started with drawing with this boat and you want to draw it like um, an elongated C shape. So, and you want it, the back end of it to be, you know, about an eighth of the way in if you divided your paper into half and then half again. You've got quarters here and then eighths. So about an eighth of the way in is the tail of that boat. So I can kind of, on this page, I can pretty much, it's an elongated swooping C shape like that. 
And then the back of the boat here goes up at an angle like that. So you just match that angle and it's like that. And then on these particular boats, they have um, uh, <clears throat> like this strange Viking <laughs> shape thing on them. This, which um, actually this angle is going back this way a little bit um, when you get the tip of that like that and then it comes down to the bottom and then it goes back up. sort of like that. And the other side is like this. And then this weird thing goes up kind of like that and it comes down again. So the, the bottom part fits, you know, is pretty firm on the water right here. This goes this way, up, at an angle like that. And then, actually, I did it wrong the first time. This, at least in this picture, this angle is like this. So it goes up like that, and then this thing angles back, but then it comes back forward around like that. This can even be shallower here on the back end. I knew that drawing these boats was going to be a challenge, but listen, they don't have to be, um, they don't have to be perfect. Everybody's quiet, so they must be working, right? And on the tail end of the boat, this comes up and then it kind of goes back that way. And then on this boat, there's a like a cover over the seated area. So I take out and I kind of end up with that. So there was the boat line across here, the top, but I've just extended and made that a little bit um, I've turned that into a cover on top of the on top of the boat and then the other boat butts up right against it so I can take that swoopy Make sure I get, I think it should be a little lower. Like that. And then this boat is right next to it. And that same long C shape. And then, remember this side, kind of swoops down like that and this part goes back this way again with that crazy Viking thing 
that's on the boat like that and that shape angles backwards now if if these viking things are not to your liking you don't want to put them on i don't know what they are but <clears throat> i'll give you a close-up in the they're right here these things on the end of the boats they're like to me they look like some kind of viking thing and i don't know what they are but uh you don't have to put those in there you can turn them into traditional um traditional um, gondolas you know just make your long C shape and then oops and turn them turn them up maybe that's a little bit kind of more like that. I better get my other picture of my gondolas out so I can... Where did I put it? Oh. Here we go, more gondolas. These ones are even harder to do, I think, when they're facing towards you like that. Okay, so there's some interesting gondola shapes. And these ones really look like they're tipping up um, with those dark shadows underneath. I drew that this week too. Oof. Um, but anyway, this is um, this is the way they look. And maybe they're tilted up a little bit more than in the picture. I'm using my yeah, this one could have been maybe a little flatter because they don't really have that much angle, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> Just get them in there and you, you don't really have to worry so much about um, those details. <clears throat> Now, what did I do with my... Oh, here we go. So if you want, just eliminate those little guys and make it... Just leave a tail on the end and don't worry about it. Anne, how are you doing? <laughs> drawing gondolas you know this week when I was doing a few sketches I thought oh my gosh this is going to be really really hard but why not challenge yourself it will help you to pay attention to um, you know some of these details this could have maybe been a little more like that And this one maybe has, I can put in a little, a little dome on that one. Here we'll probably in this area we'll add a little blue and back here this is this one's got the seats maybe showing right there <clears throat> Paulina how are you doing with your sketch <laughs> I need to get you my phone is here 
here. Terry, what about you? I'm worried because it's a difficult thing to um, to do. And I think when you're not used to drawing, this is kind of a tough project, but. Maybe I'll make these come back this way instead of going the other way. I think that looks more traditional. Paulina's laughing. <laughs> yes, Paulina. Oh my gosh. Oh, you sent a photo? Okay, I want to see your boats. Oh, you did well. Yeah, look it. That looks good. I'm sorry that this is reflecting in my... I want to show it. You're doing well, Paulina. I'm impressed. Okay, maybe you started that earlier. Good. I wish it would show up better on my screen, but it I think because my phone is so... I can't really show it very well. <laughs> no, it looks great, Paulina. Okay, so let's go ahead and get these... Um, these uh, pillars, pylons in, and we'll put one go coming this way forward in front of this boat, and we're going to draw some reflections like that. I'm going to zoom in here a little bit more. I can just a tad. All right, and then we'll put, <clears throat> now mine may not look exactly like, yeah, eliminating that one was probably a good idea. So we'll put this one here. And I think it looks good if it goes over into there. And then we need one in the middle to kind of separate these two. So this one, like these, the boats are parked in between these things. So I'm just, this one goes all the way through. That one might be a little bit too long. And um, the tops, you're gonna kind of blur them out, but what I do on the tops of these poles is just make them a little bit pointy on one end. I'll take that out of there. So as far as the color palette, um, <clears throat> we're gonna use, um, uh, for my people that have ordered the Alvaro um, Castanet set, um, we'll try to use the colors that you have in that palette because um, I know you've got them. So let me let me finish this drawing quick and then we'll get to that. Um, but basically like a rose color, uh, either permanent alizarin crimson or quinacridone rose or um, pyro red is what I used in this. Because I tried to use all the colors that you should have. I used phthalo green and I thinned it down with a little bit of cad um, lemon yellow, but you could also just use for this cerulean blue, and then here and there use cobalt blue. Um, but I use phthalo in this because phthalo, um, I'm sorry, not phthalo, I use viridian because that's one of the colors that I really like, that it's very staining and um, 
Uh, it's very transparent and it has a lot of um, power. Okay, so over here we'll just put in a um, you know indication of a dock here and maybe that maybe I put in one more there that can be like that this one can come there okay so that's it and um, I'll just erase out any of these little things that go the boat. All right. Um, try to keep this line across here straight. And um, so let me grab my brush and let's start painting. Get some of these wet. So what I did yesterday was I just used this palette right here, this little one. So maybe I'll bring that forward just to show you what you can do with not too many colors. Um, so you all have burnt sienna light, so I put that here. Mine's actually just regular burnt sienna. This is um, let me make sure. I think that's just cobalt blue. And then this is the Viridian. And I actually grabbed the Hansi Yellow Deep right here because that's what is in your Alvaro set. This one. And I use that to mix with this Pyro Red to make a very light, um, that's your sky color. Okay, so first I just used a very, very thin mix of this. And let me show you. Oops. This is fine. So if you take that yellow and you really thin it out you can get a very nice pale yellow wash which is what I used and then I took that pyro red and I just knocked in a little bit of that for the distant um, sunset color and you can mix that up by you know you can make it as deep uh, or as and then you can just keep adding color until you're satisfied with how it looks to you like a sunset however you want okay but if you also if you want to use yellow ochre there yellow ochre in the sky is also um, a fine color to use but what I used was Hansi Yellow Deep and that Pyro Red. Uh, you can use Alizarin Crimson that would be just fine or you could even use a Quin Magenta that would be fine. So and then um, in the the background here of the buildings, I just used, um, you know, I just added the cobalt blue to the pyro red. So you get a nice, um, you know, color like this for your buildings. And then 
as long as we're talking about it. So I used <clears throat> Viridian right there for my ocean color. Um, and then you can drop in a tiny bit of cobalt. You may want to mix it a tiny bit with the green first to get some variations in that. And if you want to leave some little whites for surfs and waves and whatever, you can brush across your page and get some nice shining reflections if you want. Do we need white spots in this painting? <laughs> no, you don't need white spots in the painting. If you want to, you can. Um, I didn't leave any um, really in this at all. The only white spots maybe that you want to save are on the tops of the boats for a little highlight on the boat. But in my rough sketch here, you know, maybe that's where you could leave some. If you wanted to, you could leave um, a few white spots on the water, like, you know, but it, it's almost, you'd almost want them to have a little bit of that sunsetty color coming through. I don't know if you want to mess with that, but if you wanted like a little sunset. I think I'd avoid it. A tiny bit of pink on the water maybe. Let's get a little bit of that pyro red in there. I mean you could do something like that and make a you know, like a sunset kind of glow coming through there, but don't don't complicate it. Just keep it simple. <laughs> a few whites for sparkle on the water never um, never hurt a painting. But um, don't don't worry about it if you don't. We'll see how it goes. Okay, so let's go ahead and get our first wash in. And I think a mop brush is probably a good idea for this. Let's see. something in between these two sizes really maybe this one yeah maybe a little bit thicker the reason I want a mop brush on this first wash is because you want to carry a lot of water across the page you don't want to keep dabbing with a small brush trust me don't do that <laughs> don't dab because what what will happen is you won't have enough water and so you'll have to keep going back over it and then it'll get streaky and um, it won't have a nice smooth wash so make sure that you mix up enough of the wash to begin with and so we're gonna we just have this mix of a tiny bit of the yellow and then the red and what I did was I started more with the yellow first, very thin, and then I added the red to it. So just like this across your page, get a nice um, even bead, lots of water on there, and you can come all the way down to the horizon line because we're going to go back over that with the other color. And into that, then I added, whoops, not that much red. Then I, I started adding a little bit of red to the wash, not as much as I have in my, 
I'm gonna thin that down, but I wanted it a little more pinky. Now it's getting more yellowy, but um, let's just take a little bit of that red and drop it in there. I'm doing exactly what I told you not to do, and that's going, <laughs> going over it again and again, but there we go. I just want it to be more pink, so I'm trying to knock some of that yellow out of there. And you can always make one side of the sky darker than the other if you want. And there's my pink. So while it's wet, you can play with it to kind of get it the way you want. And you can fuss with the sky as long as it's nice and wet for, you know, about... <laughs> 60 seconds and then it's kind of over because it starts settling in and drying and I'm going to put a kind of a cloud cloudy shape there maybe another one there and I've left a little bit of that yellowy kind of showing through there right by the um, by the sweet spot of that rotunda cupola. So the skies are kind of fun to play with. And down towards the bottom here, it's still wet. I'm just gonna drag my brush along here, just like that. And that's kind of evening that out. Now my board is still tilted. If I want to be brave, I can go right in and start, well, I need to mix up my, my Viridian color here. Get this out of here. And I guess I can use, I don't want to use too big of a brush. So this is drying, it's almost, you know, it's got like a dry edge already. And um, I'm going to add just a, a smidge of that yellow to it. And also I may add, let me get just a smidge of the blue. Just because I don't want to use the Viridian straight out of the tube, just add a tiny bit of it there. And um, I'm going to put my shade down here because it's getting a little bit sunny. I need to add a little more Viridian. Okay, a touch more yellow in there, maybe a touch more blue. I want sort of a nice light, so you may have to thin it out a little. Color like that. And mix up a good pool of it so you have plenty because you're going to need it for. Um, to get all the way down. Now I'm using this little tiny palette, but <laughs> it's nice when you can have a bigger palette with a bigger mixing area. So, all right, so we want it to be kind of lighter in the background. So I'm really gonna thin down a portion of this and start pretty light right along the edge here. And I could have dampened that edge um, a little bit, 
But remember, we're going to put a shadow on top of those buildings. So I'm really going from light green to darker as I go down the page, hopefully. So every time you go across, you can add a little bit darker um, viridian mix if you want. A little more saturated. And you can go right over. I'm going to go around these boat Viking shape things. And I keep adding a little more blue here as I'm going down the page. And I'll try to save some white. Keep a nice bead along that edge so it doesn't dry. You can go right over those pylon things because they're going to be painted dark, darker, darkish. I could use a little bit smaller brush for this, this detail here. I can see this is starting to dry on the edges, so I want to just keep painting this. Right there, it's already dried. And that's kind of a no-no because um, I'll just do that. Because um, if it dries, it leaves a hard line, and you don't want that in your painting. So then just keep going on. all the way down the page. And I'll make the pigment a little bit thicker here as we get towards the bottom. Keep picking up paint and make a nice wash. There we go. And then anything that I maybe missed here like right in between these boats, I can fill in before it dries. The worst thing is when you look up and you go, oh no, I, I missed a spot, or I should have, or I painted over something I left that I should have left open. I'm going to change my water real quick, only because it's, it wasn't perfectly clean to start with, and um, you like my new little ceramic palette? Thank you. Yeah, I like it too. I like to put colors in it that I don't use all the time, but today I thought I'd put in, or last night, whatever, I thought I'd put in the colors that you guys have on your, in your Alvaro set, Alvaro set, because um, then we can use exactly the same colors and it'll be good. One thing is that I'm really not super crazy about that pyro red, mixing it with this Hansi Yellow Deep. It's okay, but it, I think, mm, I don't know. I'm More often I'm used to using Yellow Ochre with um, Alizarin Crimson or Permanent Alizarin Crimson, but it could be just my paper too today that this paper is um, it's the back side of a sheet that I've already painted on and I don't know it's I think maybe when it's dry it'll be okay but I just like the look of this guy it's a little it has more 
it's more translucent to me but it's probably because I have something on the back side of this even though when I look at the video right now it looks pretty good so I'm gonna go refill my drink I'll be right back Okay, how did everybody's washes come out? <laughs> it's hard to get a, a nice even wash when you're when you're just starting. So don't get discouraged. <clears throat> Let's change out this water quick. Paula, I'm curious what colors you're using because I don't know which which colors you have in your set. And um, I know what Ann and Terry have because I told them what to buy. But um, okay, so I'll bet you're using cerulean, right? Instead of the uh, viridian. The other color you could use for blue is thalo, thalo blue, and just thin it down a lot and add like a cad lemon yellow to it, lemon yellow light. <laughs> you tried to save some whites? Okay, let's see. Not much success. Ooh, okay, good. Wow, that looks nice, Paulina. You're using nice watercolor paper, I can tell by the texture of it. Okay, so you saved a few whites down there below. <clears throat> That's fine. What, um, what I do in my washes when I wanna try to get a sparkly white is press down hard on the brush, so this is your brush. Press hard. And the ridges on the rough paper will make the whites. So um, that gives you essentially that, that kind of look. And then if you wanted to get really fancy, you could start making some waves by darkening underneath some of those whites to get um, let's see you know to start getting um, I added a little bit of alizarin to this to show you and then sometimes people use a 
uh, side of their brush to make like a scratchy I got it a little bit too red but you know then you get the wave kind of um, that roughness in there the wave action going along the beach like that that shouldn't be so red there we go and splatter up I'm not, I, I don't really enjoy painting waves that much. I mean, I like simple water, but splashy waves, um, it's not really my thing, but I guess it's good to know how to do it. And then you can splatter a tiny bit of surf in there. Like... like that and then putting more waves in the background see how you drag the brush along the side and you, you can press hard and then you get that textural kind of the white skips will give you that um Hey, 007, how are you? Hi, Anne. Oh, you're just coming on now? <laughs> okay, no worries. We're talking about um, skips making little um, white highlights on your water as we're painting along our Venice scene here. And what I'm going to do is... Um, you can always watch the replay, Anne, but we've gotten our first wash done. <clears throat> and now we're going to go ahead and um, work on our second wash. So, Anne, if you want, um, <laughs> you can print out the drawing that I sent. And you can work on the drawing. I don't know where I put my drawing. It's here somewhere. Oh, you're welcome, Paulina. Yeah, practice. Just practice doing that on the back of a, you know, an old sheet of watercolor, maybe a painting or or something that didn't turn out. Um, yeah, doing these kind of waves and. Um, you know, getting that is, uh, th there is a, a little bit of practice involved in trying to do that. And some people do it really well, as you know. I mean, there's tons of tutorials online and people out there that are kind of masters of, of doing those, that, that, you know, making it look like water in whatever form. But, okay. So now let's do the second layer. And what we need here is um, to mix up your red and blue to get a nice um, gray tone for the grayish, lightish wash for the silhouette of the buildings in the back. And I think I still have a little bit of that other. Oh, well, that'll be fine. And so you mix up a nice big puddle of it again, so you have plenty. And you can look at it and just add more water if you want, if you think that it might be too light or too dark. And um, in my case, mine is veering towards a pretty, pretty good mm, violety, light violety gray color. So I would say that I'm okay with that. And I'll just go along here and. I'm just going to put it in and I'm going to make up some buildings here along the back as I'm going and stick to a and maybe along this bottom edge I'll leave a few lights there um, 
just to and maybe I'll put a couple little spires in there to maybe their rooftops or whatever just to vary that silhouette a little bit and down towards the water line try to keep it even uh, if you come over a little bit I don't think it's going to matter too much And I guess you could, if you wanted, like, you could paint around. You could leave a couple of those. Um, so here's our background silhouette. Paulina was recently in another city maybe I don't remember the name anymore but you sent me some nice pictures of <laughs> your your rainy day visit and there were some in there I really liked I especially like those cityscapes where you catch the cafes with the umbrellas and all that I just think that's really nice so here I am doing the background silhouette I've saved a few of these lights in the windows or to suggest windows in these buildings. If you want to do that, you can. Just a few here and there. And um, just keep going across here. Maybe I'll add a little bit more paint. Here we go. Easy as pie, right? <clears throat> yeah, you'll rewatch the beginning later, yes. And okay, so that's done. So now we can go back to our viridian or cerulean blue um, green color. And we can mix that up with a little bit of, um, well, right now my um, cobalt blue there is really contaminated with that red mix. So what I'm going to do is make another spot of it. So I'll take my cobalt and I think I'll just put it in my other little palette here. There we go. It's my tattoo today. Look at my skin, it's like all shrivelly. It's so dry right now. Oh, that was kind of cool. All right, so with the cobalt and the viridian together, you can kind of mix up another version of this green because what you can do is put um, some darker wave shapes in the background of your painting and oops sorry I keep hitting the camera so you don't want them too dark in fact I would kind of thin that out and start with it kind of light and just do a few back there and see how it looks I'll scatter them out randomly and as I get more of the painting done I might get more brave and put in you know a few more we'll see how it goes 
and then you can dampen off like rinse out your brush dampen it off and if you want then with that kind of thirsty brush you can play with these on the edges and thin thin them out take a damp brush rinse it off dampen it off with your sponge and then you can play with these edges a little bit to soften them if you want and you can also drag them down a little to make them look like you know they're not just sitting there like elephants on the water but you can play and give them some different edges and you can connect them you can you know kind of manipulate them around as much as you want and maybe some are you know wider than others thicker than others really it's kind of up to you I don't want to get too carried away so I rinse off my brush I can dampen them and move them a little bit change the shapes you don't want to disturb your paper too much but <clears throat> okay and that'll look um, better too when you get your the lines of these um, pylons or pillars or whatever you want to call them in there all right so let's uh, get into the boat itself and I just used a mixture of that cobalt blue and the red, the pyrrole red, and then maybe a little burnt sienna along the way. So it's sort of, you know, the, the boat is, well, yeah. I shouldn't have put that thing in there, but um, you want it to have some body. And you want to get the paint on there thick enough so it starts to um, thick and wet enough so that you get a nice deep sort of a color because that boat is going down into the water and like I said you can save a little white on the edge have this nice wash in here and you can drop more paint into it thicker paint if I can grab pick up some thicker paint I think my pyrrole red is and you can drop it in I need to add and the blue and a little bit of um, to get a nice dark on the bottom of this boat. You can even use a little bit of Viridian and that'll darken up the bottom part of the boat. Keep doing that to the... And then the boat itself is going to just melt right into the water 
and right into the shadows on the water. So that's when you're going to start doing this. So this is just on my scratch paper, so don't worry. But So you can start planning to do these kinds of shapes because you want to do your boat and your shadow at the same time. Your shadows that are coming off the boat. That doesn't look very good because there's too many whites in there, but let's go ahead and try it. So I've got my cobalt blue. I'm going to put some viridian in there. And a little more cobalt. And then maybe a little bit of this red. Oof. That's a pretty nice dark. A little more viridian, I think. I want it to be really dark. Towards the top edge of the boat, you can leave that white line. So be brave. Get your little Now it looks nice if your wash has a few different colors in it. So I'm going to thin out part of this up here. So it still has some transparency. And honestly, you can go right through here because you're going to put that thing on the right through it anyway. So don't worry about it. And then I'm going to do a little bit thinner wash right now on the other one. I'm going to put this in because I have on this little tail of this thing, I have about the right color on there that I want. It's just a nice thin bluish grayish. And I think I'll keep a little separation between these two boats right there. I'm going to put this one in as well. Now before the bottom edge of this boat dries, I really want to get, I need to get the shadow in there because the shadow should be part of the boat and so you kind of just have to go for it and make up some interesting shadows and connect them to the bottom of the boat. And back this way, it comes around like that.
Remember your shadows, like you can add a little more viridian to the bottom of the boat here, a little more green maybe, black, whatever, and just let that run right down into your shadow. And I think it's, gosh, I keep hitting this, <laughs> this cord from my camera. It's nice to have these um, swirling sort of shadow shapes and um, interesting shadow shapes always around the boat. And then this one too is, where's my picture? Okay, so we need a little bit more shadow here coming off of this area. So I'll just pick up some more paint and keep going. A little more blue in there. Darken it up. And this boat has um, a shadow coming off of it too. So we'll connect those together. Some of these I can darken up a little bit. And <clears throat> when you do your, these, um, so I'll pick up a little burnt sienna and some of the leftover, the other um, from my blue area and I'll just put in this this guy this uh, whatever you call him and you can add some dark and light here and there get it down to the where the uh, water is and then you can make a nice reflection coming off of that. Same thing with this one. Do a quick, fast stroke to get a little bit of a varied stroke on there. A little bit of dry brush, a little bit of here and there. And this just do a quick stroke get those across and um, I'll go ahead and add my shadow to that pillar too And then you just keep going with it. I put a little bit of viridian in that brown color. You can vary it up and add a little bit of, um, you know, a little bit of a warm color to these posts. The main thing is you want to kind of give them a little texture so you can scratch with your fingernail into them as they start to dry and do a, just a rough, a little rough um, quick fast stroke. Need a little more burnt sienna. And 
and a few more reflections on these guys. May not have gotten some of those dark enough. And I can go back in with my liner brush and add even darker blue and burnt sienna. Some calligraphy. To these posts. Um, so I'm just like darkening one side to give it a little bit of form. Oops, got a little brown paint on me. Just adds a little texture to those. You don't want them to look perfect. Okay. got paint all over me. <laughs> all right, I'm going to take a little bit smaller brush and put some details in on these boats. So um, clean off. some of this in my palette. So the, um, why don't I go ahead and use a little bit of the cobalt blue. And the pyro red. And we'll just kind of get this this thing in here and you can see that I put mm, I've got a little bit of a wet wash going so you can see part of its red part of its blue so I've mixed some of those colors right on the um, right on the paper so I get a, a mixture of the two and I'll, I'll leave that white line there on the edge of the boat, maybe. And then the other boat behind it, I guess we'll make that a little bit darker. But first I'm going to do the inside of it because I don't want to... Um, I don't want to mess up this wash I just did, so I don't want to get too near it. But I'll just go in here and, you know, my. I'm going to do a very good job of getting this, this post here all the way across. There we go. And this one could be a little darker. This one could be a little darker here and there. Remember things with form, they have shadow. So as, they go, as you go from one side to the other, it goes from lighter to darker. So to create that form, you make one side darker, one side lighter, and in the middle, somewhere in between. And on the light edge, you know, maybe a highlight. Okay, 
So what I got on here. Let's keep going with this. And I want a little more viridian. I need to clean out this well so I can get some fresh paint in there. And um, mix it with a little bit of that yellow again to get a lighter color green. Whoops. Because I want to put a little bit of color in these boats. that dark but for some variety in there something happening and then I can just go right ahead and fill in the other side the dark side and we'll leave that green. And we'll put this down here. So you get your other boat in there and you can, like I said, you can leave a few whites on that edge up there and on this one if you want if you're careful enough if you're not don't worry about it because you can always use gouache to put a little light a highlight in there if you want to I don't know why that's okay And the seats back there, I think I'll just leave them a real light blue-green shade, maybe, like that. Just let those melt into there. And I think the white line along the back edge there, I'll, um, I'll tone that down a bit by using the same, the same um, sky color. Okay, because it's popping out too much. And we're just going to make it, oops, I'm going to make it have that cast of the, the setting sun color along that edge. And here too, maybe. There we go. And I think I'll I think I'll deepen up this red color back here a little bit. Okay. Mm, 
Maybe I'll add a little more to that and just try to, I don't want those white shapes there, add a little more A little more dark here inside of the gondola. And then I'm going to put a little stripe, a little racing stripe on the side of it. towards the purple for the other one. And same thing here, I can darken these up a little if I want along the edge and along the edge of the boat. This pylon here should have been a little darker through brown. Let's get that in there. Okay. And then you can take your liner brush or fine pointed detail brush and you can just add a few little dashes and lines and things for uh, details on your boats. Maybe on this thing. I'm not sure about that one, but over here, a couple of lines here and there. And then um, I feel like my little shadow shape here could have had a little more going this way. Let me add a little more like that. And back underneath this area here, I think we need some I think I'll connect some of those reflections. A little blue, a little green. take your liner and grab a little burnt sienna like this and make a few connections here with these ropes maybe that are going across tying the boats up to the you know, the dock. And I think in the background here, I used a little just leftover gray color, whatever you have to put in a few a few little windows, dark spots in the background and you can even put a little just a few lines and dashes to um,
Not too much, just a little bit in the background there. Maybe suggesting a few windows and things. And then, if you want, <clears throat> you can take your blue and red here, mix up your purple, and add a few little splatters in that sunset sky and a couple of birds if you want. Maybe another one there. Yeah. Boy, I don't know what kind of paper this is that I used on here, but it's um, <laughs> it's uh, I it doesn't it seems like it doesn't have any sizing. It seems like the watercolor sucked right into the paper. Maybe because I used the back side of whatever paper this was. So, and now I feel like I can just add a few more darker um, reflections on the water. And I'll just use my Viridian here and put a little cobalt in there. Just a few here and there. A few of them need to be darker. And So I'm just dragging my brush across with another, um, and over here I think I'd like this to just be a shadow shape coming down here off of this dock, like a larger shadow shape. So I'm going to just add a nice little reflection here down on that side of the paper where that it's under that dock area and I can also use a little more burnt sienna you can even mix that with cobalt to make it darker. Really give this a little more texture. Thunder drawer, well thank you.
And of course, always the last thing that you can do is um, add a few highlights to things if you want with your gouache. And um, you could highlight the top of these posts. You could highlight the top of these um, lines, ropes, whatever they are. You could highlight the top of maybe, you know, a highlight on the boat or whatever, if you want. I guess I had some gouache in there. Maybe I can add a highlight back in on the edge of that boat. Uh, barely. I don't know if I really need it there, but now I've kind of mucked it, mucked it up a little. But um, maybe on the highlight side of these. of these um, things, you know, where the light might be catching it. Maybe especially across this one. Here we go. I didn't do this guy up here very well. El Curry, hi. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, well, this was my sketch. Woof. Which is nice and loose. And then obviously when I'm teaching it and trying to, you know, do everything perfectly, it doesn't look as loose and as it's also... Um, this paper is a little bit, you know, I have a painting on the back side of this that I did a long time ago that I don't like. And um, so that's why I painted on the back of this paper. But the, um, I don't know what kind of paper this is, but I think number one that I painted on the other side, uh, it's not as translucent as it could be. and. You know, or it's or it's the combination of um, it hasn't dried completely yet. But yeah, it does give you a lot of there's a lot of <laughs> a lot of color in there, and um, I tried to use the colors that are on um, the set, the Alvaro set that um, you know I had some people bought for the class, and. Um, just to show you what you can do with it. So, um, <clears throat> that's it. Paulina says something went wrong with her shadows. Oh, look at that, okay. Um, well, what's going on with the shadows is, even in mine, they're a little heavy, but you wanna vary them a little bit it's really hard to do to connect the shadow shapes what you what you need to try to balance and it's even hard for me is that you want them to be dark but you but you also want to still vary the color within the shadows so that you have some variety so um, look at this scrap this one I did for scratch See how there's lots of different colors in there? So I know it's it's hard, it's not easy, but um, let me just try to um, get a little more, like say for example you have this boat shape 
here. Okay. And you want to create the shadows coming off the boat like this, right? So what you try to do is incorporate the boat right into the, so you kind of start with a wash, maybe lighter, um, let me just grab a little bit of, I don't know, I'll just throw in some yellow ochre into that. And then, so you want to vary the color, and then as you get to the bottom of the boat, right there is where you want to hit it with some good darks. And I mean thicker paint that's creamier and darker. So I'm just taking burnt sienna right now and I'm throwing in some cobalt blue, which is a pretty thick creamy mess. And right here, you want to drop that right on the edge and then let it sort of blend into the previous little wash area of the boat. And it's kind of going to get sucked back up into the area that's already wet. And then down below here, is where you want to start adding a little bit of water to get your shadow shape going under the boat. So you add just a little more water to your brush and also you can add a variety of color in there to start producing your shadow shape. So you want to try to balance translucency uh, still having it translucent but dark and changing the colors at the same time for it to give you some nice variety. So this would be a pretty good wash here you know, the thing with these boats in Venice is that they're, they're, it's very dark, they're very backlit, but you can still make it interesting by adding a little bit of color variation. And same thing here. This on the bottom edge of the boat, kind of get that wet. and then let it go with the blue and viridian. Then as you get down towards the bottom, get it darker and thicker, and then put in your reflections. Let's see if I can need some more paint here. Here we go. And you can kind of let that bleed in like that into a shape, a mass, but it still needs to move. The paint needs to just granulate and move and blend and um, still have some translucency, even though it's dark, <laughs> some variation. And um, I'll tell you who does this really good is Joseph Zbukvich, and I'll show you in his book. Um, there's a real art to the way he does that. I can add here at the bottom of the boat a little more dark paint and just let it bleed. Now here I didn't make a very convincing shadow on this shape. He makes little Z's in the water. It really takes a lot of practice.
it's not easy at all. Well, that one I really kind of mucked up, but um, this one down here is better because what you're trying to do there is create that, that dark where the boat meets the water, it's very dark there. Maybe I can use a little of this to indicate that better. And then it goes out like that. Sorry, I think I've got this. Ugh, no, I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> we'll get the water back up there. <sighs> okay. Let me get let me get my book. I want to show you something. Here's one, for example. Uh, he has a very good... Hmm. I think in this book he does a demo of that. I'm just trying to find it. I think it's in the back here. Well, here's one. Okay. Now, if you look very closely, now this has um, the boat just melts right into the shadow. And that's sort of what you're aiming for. And this one, he has the ends are dark towards the middle. He has the light hitting it here and it kind of evaporates into uh, right there it drips into the shadow underneath and then he has his little squiggles <laughs> sorry I know it's hard to see that with the reflections but let me get there's another page here okay here okay see this boat is all he's done this all in one wash here he starts out with a you know maybe that blue line on top and then he lets that melt into a nice a lighter wash and that wash goes down to the bottom of the boat and then as that's just as that's kind of setting just a tiny bit he'll take his um, raw umber and drop it in there along the edge and that starts to bleed back up into the other part on the white part the gray part and then it also drips and bleeds and then he starts making this wash here at the same time so he makes that shape and then keeps going with these Z's these lines back and forth to get the edge that he wants there but it's all melted, it's all done at one time. Um, here's another example. Let's see if I can. There we go. And you have to paint the boat kind of all at once to go from the top of the boat, the, the side of the boat there you know he'll put that creamy wash in whatever wash color and then as you go down then he adds the dark at the same time and then the um, the reflections look at this boat see how he let that one just wash right into it melts right into the water and he does that very purposefully um, 
Same thing on this one. See that? Now he's exaggerated those dark edges. And, and he, even though this is dark, it's backlit, mine is like a nocturne almost. So mine is even more backlit and in shadow. Now I just did this very rough on, whoops, on the watercolor page, but <laughs> Thunder Drawer, who's Thunder Drawer? Keep up the good work, I love drawing, but painting is cool. Okay, good, well, thanks Thunder Drawer, I appreciate it. Um, so here, you know, I'm trying to melt it in, but obviously this is cheap paper and it's kind of gotten, well, I like the irregular idea there, but um, uh, on this one, I could have a few more reflections, but that gives you an idea of what, you know, how to make it, um, how to make those boat reflections go right into the water. And on this one, he put these soft hazy ones in there in his first wash. And I'll show you right here. So he washes down the page, right? And as this, this is all one nice wash under here. He goes from light, he adds a little more golden color here and then a little more light bluish gray here. And while that's still wet, it's starting to dry. He'll drop in these other little flicks of blue into there. But he's, you have to be very careful about how much water you use because otherwise you'll get a big huge bloom and he just has a tiny bit of the blue paint on his brush and not a lot of water and he's just putting in those soft marks across. But he did that first. And then he came back and did the boats and put and melted them into the shadows. I hope that helps. <laughs> it's hard. It's not easy. That's a good one to practice in your sketchbook. Like, do a lot of boats with shadows and practice those um, those kinds of things if you like doing seascapes. So this one's not too bad. I think um, what I could use is, you know, I should have maybe gone a little bit darker here under this boat. Um, and then you'd see an exaggeration on that. But it's melting in. <laughs> Just maybe not as, as dark as it should have been underneath there. So I could have used more burnt sienna right there with um, burnt sienna and that cobalt blue right here and then brought it down a little more. So. Let's see if he has any more. It's got to be late where you are, Paulina. Here's another one with boats. See how the boat, the bottom of the boat and the reflection are one? I don't know if you can even see it, it's so dark. my camera to focus. There we go. Look at those reflections. Oh, and look at this one. Okay. Oops.
The red accent is nice on those boats. I don't really have an accent color on here, but I could. It might be fun. I hear Joe getting ice. I wonder if he's getting me a spritzer. So we could put a red, a little red across our gondola there. A red racing stripe. I'm not sure about that. What might be nice is um, like a cobalt teal or just a um, turquoise. here along the edge, maybe there. Hey Jojo, is that for me? There you go honey. Wow, we made me a spritzer. Five o'clock somewhere. Come here and say hi to everybody. Did you get your hair cut? No. Oh. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Hi, Joe. What's going on? Hi, Joe. <laughs> We're doing Venice boats today. That's a good one. You like that? Nice. Mm, it's okay. It's not... It's, it, it's got some issues, but it's, um, it's all right. I think I'm going to make these a little bit bigger. These little chairs in here. Oh. In the gondola. Bye, everybody. <laughs> He's leaving. He's leaving, and I'm going to have a spritzer. Right. Everybody says hi, Joe. <laughs> Terry and Ann and Paulina. Nice. Paulina, is your work going okay? I think we do need a little accent in here of something or other. So let's see. Let's, I can't get this. Uh, I don't know. There we go. Why does this have that spot there? That's bothering me. This is a good one for your sketchbooks, just to practice doing your little um, drawings and your washes and your... Mm. Oh, you did? Really? I want to see, Paulina. Let me see your work. You mean you painted for three days? Or you or you worked, worked? Oh, your friend's parents hosted you. Nice. Oh, wonderful. I'll bet it was really nice. Well, I want to see what you painted. I want to see how you did. Oh, just work work. Okay. Paulina, one thing you could do with your boats, and I'll try to show you on mine, is um, 
You could take a little spritz of your spritzer or just a damp tissue. You can take your brush or actually a dry tissue. You can take your brush and add a little bit of water to it like this right there and then just um, just add a little highlight to one area like that and if you want you can spray a little <clears throat> this if you want to do like rainy reflections you can spray and it'll break up the paint a little bit now I've sprayed a lot on there to exaggerate but um, if I take my cobalt here and plop it on there it's gonna run yeah, mix it in with a little bit of the Viridian and make some rivulets in there but you can break up some of that um, in your painting and play with it a little bit it's hard to see what it's doing but do you see how it's breaking it up a little it's wet right now and you can drop in some thicker paint and it will run uh, and, and break up that heaviness in your wash. But I would definitely try to put, just take a, a wet brush, get it a little wet, and then blot it with a tissue to pull out some highlights out of your um, boats. You see what it's doing there? So you can see the um, how it's breaking up that wash and adding a little highlight there. <clears throat> you can do the same thing back here on those. Well, I guess I should have a sip of my spritzer. I haven't even finished my whole Diet Dr. Pepper yet. I'm on a Diet Dr. Pepper kick. You did a really nice wash, Paulina, in that sky. I'm looking at your photo in the background. And your silhouette and your drawing. So now it's just a matter of practicing handling the paint because it's really not easy. And, you know, it's like a million things can go wrong. I'm scratching my fingernail into this board, this this piling thing to give it a little more texture. My um, chat over here is I'm gonna. I can't see the chat right now, so I have to reopen a new page. Okay, there we go.
All right, well, let me show you what I did. This is a funny little one I did this week with the gondolas. So um, I was trying to make some interesting shapes uh, inspired by my friend Frank Webb. Um, he is the shape maker and what he does is not easy. Oh my gosh. Um, let's see if there's, oh, there's no more parts in here. So this was just playing around. Like I said, I normally don't paint like this, but you really can. And was I trying to use the same palette? It looks like it. The same kind of, you know, Viridian and the Pyro Red. Um, what I don't like about it is, um, well, first of all, the background's not, mm, some of my washes aren't very good on here, but like I said, I don't normally paint like this, but it was kind of fun just to play around with it, <laughs> making some fun, wacky shapes. Is it a parachute over there? You like the colors? Yeah, I do too. It's kind of fun. This? Uh, this is like part of the dock, sort of. And then these are like steps going down. But I tried to make them funky and wacky. And um, I wish that I had used a different color for this. But anyway, it's just a fun little sketch. And then I did started another one too that I didn't, um, again, using those same kind of colors. But this one, um, this one I, I didn't finish. And I didn't really like this here. And the gondola shapes were kind of weird, so it's just a funky little painting. But <laughs> I don't know if I'll ever really try to finish it. It's just in my sketchbook. So, but you can you can go crazy and do fun things like that too. Don't feel like you always have to, uh, you know, try to make it fun. Maybe I'll take the tape off of this. I thought I had one more that I did at this. Oh. And then <clears throat> here I just did, this was a little study for the first one, which is kind of fun. And then here I was just fooling around with some boat shapes. Oh no, in the sky? Hmm. <laughs> I don't think so. A parachute in the sky. Where did I put the painting? Now I've set it somewhere and I don't know where it is. Oh. Oh, this thing? No, that's supposed to be a light post. <laughs> it's a light, it's a lamp post. Yeah, I took it from um, a photo that I had. Where did I put my Venice photos? Um, oh, this one. Do you see? The little staircase, I tried to make it a little more wacky, and then there was a lamp post. And instead of making it straight up, you know, you can tilt things <laughs> near the flag. So in your reference photo, do a bunch of little sketches to come up with, um, you know, a plan. 
do some thumbnail sketches. And ideally they should be no more than two by two or two by three, just to get some ideas for your big shapes. And this is the little sketch that I did to get some ideas. This, and then also in my other sketchbook. So I was playing around with these, right? This one I decided to add that guy in afterwards. And then, wait, there's more. What did I do with, um, I had a couple more in here somewhere. Wait, let me look. So Anne, did you do anything in your sketchbook? I've heard that you've organized everything. I'm curious to see. And also next week, why don't we try to do Zoom and I'll just post the Zoom code on Instagram and on the Facebook page. Well, it must be in my smaller sketchbook. Let's see. Oh. Gosh, guys, I'm such a dunce. I did these fun ones. Well, I don't like the bottom one, really. That one doesn't have a good design plan, and my boat got a little bit too tipped up. But um, the top one, I really like. And that's from that same photo. See, and then I did this one with the boats like that. So here I was practicing those boat shapes and these pylons um, with the boats facing us like that. So then I attempted to do this watercolor and it got really messed up. But this one I really like, the real loose sketch. And <clears throat> part of what I like about it is that I've, I've got this um, this the pen and ink going on along with it which is giving it you know a lot of character isn't that fun so you can outline a lot of these shapes with your pen and ink and make really cute um, designs that are fun. You've just been playing with colors, mixing them, and learning to control the amount of water and paint. I'm a complete newbie. Yeah, 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 I get it. I know. Um, I'm a complete newbie. Well, do practice just um, doing little sketches, too. Um, I don't know if I sent you the photograph of this image, but it's kind of a tough one because of the shape of the boats. I was a little worried about that, but here it is. And if you guys want this photograph to play around with, I'll send it to you. Um, just don't try to do it too literally, okay? Just try to sketch loosely with a pen and have a little bit of fun. It's fun you're enjoying it. Oh, good, okay. All right, I'm gonna have a sip of my spritzy. Cheers, everybody. Yeah, I had a lot of fun with this one, um, mainly because I really like the way it turned out, and it's, um, it's a fun little painting. <laughs> 
so what else did I do? Um, Well, I worked mostly on Venice, little Venice studies. Um, I really thought this one turned out kind of interesting too. A little bit better than the one I did today, it seems like. A mess. I think this is missing just a few darks. It, it should have a few more darks here too. Um, it's not, it doesn't have enough detail in the darks in the center of interest like this one does. This one pops a little more. So I think if I added yet one more little wash and some more details in there, it would, it would pop a little bit more. Especially down in here on this side. So. And it's kind of fun to play with this, um, this little ocean. In fact, I'll probably just cut this out. Right there. <clears throat> Any of your watercolors that you do, that you don't like, don't ever throw them out. Keep them and you can always um, use them for other things. Well, number one, you can paint on the back side if you want. And I do that very square. But I do all kinds of things with them. <laughs> I turn them into cards. I can go back over this with um, pastel or, um, or um, colored pencils. I've used watercolor pencil over the top if I have, you know, not, not necessarily because I need the watercolor on there, but sometimes it can help. And then, oh, something that you guys should do too is um, if you go to you. well, no, let's see. He's on F Facebook Live, I think. Uh, let me double check. Um, Um, oh, Kathleen says, oh, they got a fire down there in Apple Valley near her. Wow. I'll have to ask her about that. Um, I think it's Facebook Live. Let me check. Is it YouTube? No, I'm pretty sure it's Facebook. Daniel Smith. If you go to Daniel Smith Artist Materials, yeah. Yeah, he's live on YouTube. I think it's on Wednesdays. Daniel Smith Artist Materials on YouTube Live. They have one of their guys that talks about um, all the Daniel Smith paints. So 
this last time he talked about the watercolor sticks which are just pure pigment sticks of watercolor and I've seen them before but I never really thought about trying them but they might be kind of interesting once in a while especially for traveling if you could if you're worried about taking tubes somewhere you could just put the sticks in a pencil pouch and um, you can use shavings you can just rub your paintbrush on there and and use it just like that But anyway, he talks about all the pigments and the colors and this and that and the chemistry and everything you'd want to know. So he has a really good, if you have extra time, watch his YouTube videos. So what does everybody have going on for the week, then? <laughs> it looks like a person landing into the water with a parachute. Oh, this one. That's funny. I guess I need to strengthen the color of that post. You know, what I was trying to do is... Um, and not very successfully with this with this painting, but I was trying to um, like make some interesting shapes. And the problem is, is that the photograph I was following the photograph too literally. Um, if you want to make something funky, you really have to jack it up. And see, I was trying to make like the white steps and then the white post and connect the white shapes um, but there aren't there aren't enough they're not significant enough I should have made them bigger to make a bold statement it, you know like Frank Webb last week we were talking about Frank Webb oh a dancing class what kind of dancing Only work planned, yeah. Um. <laughs> I had a friend from Poland um, who was very into dance. She did a lot, of, like she was like doing all kinds of professional, not professional, but you know, salsa, merengue, rumba, and not just the Latin dances, but everything. She was like really into dancing. Um, <clears throat> where's that one book that I was going to look at? Oh, oh. oh, well, here's another shape maker, okay? So, what you can do is take your photograph reference and try to separate out just all your white shapes and oh solo salsa oh nice that's a really good workout Paulina I used to love to go salsa dancing but I don't do it anymore gosh huh. do you see all these white shapes there's enough of them and he's got them going up the page and even continues them into the sky to make it cohesive. And then what he does is he outlines his, his white shapes with darker, with dark shapes to um, emphasize them. And I love this guy's painting, Ratindra Das. This is his name. Do we have any more? Okay, here's another one. And a lot of these shapes you can do with a flat brush. A lot of times I paint with a round brush, but flat brushes are good for doing 
these kinds of shape making paintings. And these shape makers also use a lot of symbols. This guy, his paintings look a lot like Frank Webb's, who's also considers, you know, he's considered a shape maker. You feel every muscle on your back. Ugh. Yeah, and look at the big white shapes that make the design. And also how the connections, the white shapes are connected throughout the painting. Everywhere you go, it's connected to another white shape, except for there maybe. And around the white shapes, he's made interesting dark shapes. First a bigger one, and then smaller and smaller dark shapes. So that's what I was trying to do with my, um, with this one. But where I failed was I didn't have interesting enough and large enough white shapes, I think, to connect together. So you can have, you know, these are large white shapes surrounded by dark value with an interesting pattern connecting them. And here, it's just, there's not enough. Mm, maybe if I continued, I don't know. If I had more dark up here, and then the light shapes connected. But you need to really work that out on a thumbnail sketch before, uh, to, before you do it. And I had, um, I had a couple of thumbnails, but I don't know which book I put it in. Maybe it's back here. Did I put them in here? No. I know. Oh, it's in this sketchbook, I think. I think I put them in here. There they are. Okay. So here's my thumbnail where I had the whites separated out. But see, I should have made that bigger. And then down here, this just turned into a mess. But, um, more careful planning would have made me a better um, a better design and a better painting. Because in the end, all these colors don't matter. It's the design that makes the painting work. And actually, if I had a darker dark here, that would help connect those shapes together. Anyway, like this. I love his style too. Ritindra Das, look him up. And also Frank Webb. And Frank's on Facebook. So I don't know if he's still accepting friends, but um and here's the different brushes, the different brush strokes. If he still if you can still friend him, he posts every day, I think, an uh, one of his paintings, and he talks about the design of it, which he'll say, like, um, it's a small white with um, medium darks and then a mid-tone surround. Small white shapes, medium dark shapes, and then the rest is mid-tone. And that's his design plan for the whole painting. And I love paintings that are really creative like this, that have, you know, it's, it's only easy to do if, you, if you've done it and you've planned it and you know what you're doing. Once you, once you get it, then they're easier to do. But if you're not thinking about planning out this kind of painting, it's not gonna happen. 
I just love it. Let's see if I do I have any more of my Frank Webb examples. We were looking at that one last week, and that's why we decided to do Venice. But um, let me think. Where did I put that one book? Oh, right here. See, we were actually looking at this book, which has this real loose painting of Venice. Okay, and I said maybe we'll do a gondola and a person and we'll do it real loose like this. Well, I got kind of bored with that because I started looking, I didn't want to use his reference material, so I looked at my own photos of Venice and um, I started thinking about Frank Webb and then I went, <laughs> these are so fun, and then I went off on a tangent trying to do a checkerboard sort of style like Frank Webb and play around with my sketchbook and but you know what it was fun because I came up with all this different goofy stuff so anyway but somewhere in this book I think there was a one of these books we were looking at a Frank Webb painting maybe it's not in this one but I do like this as well. The only thing is, is doing this angle. Now here's another boat with that funny thing on it. What is that called in Venice with this little Viking? I don't know what that is. I'll have to find out. But doing this shape is, um, you know, something you're going to need to kind of practice drawing that out if you want to do that. But I didn't want to copy the same thing as this guy did. Now he's done it with a much looser style. But look at the gradation from the top of this post, how gray it is, to mid-tone, to dark. And he's changed it from warmer to cooler blue. And that's what you need to try to do in your, in your paintings not just one solid color all the way. Look at the rough texture, the edge on this on this post and how he breaks it up from light to mid-tone to dark and then in between he's scratched out a few areas here. He's taken his damp brush and gone over there and scratched that out and um, the background. Look at how simplified that is. I'm telling you, your drawings don't have to be perfect, especially, um, I mean, you need to proportionally, you need to get things right. Notice how it's a third from the top. That, of course, is important. But, um, very little detail back here. That's why I really encourage you to get into your sketchbook and just play. Do simple little sketches of things and play around with it. And look at how loose this wash is here. You know why? Do you know why this one is real loose like that and doesn't have hardly any hard edges? Who can answer that for me? That's the test question for today while I take a sip of my spritzer. <laughs> Why does this one have loose soft edges? And this one, then this one here. Does anybody know? We need to have a Zoom class about design, all about design. <laughs> it was an accident? That's, it looks like an accident, but it wasn't an accident. That's a good guess, though. 
It's a good answer. The real answer is, is that when you look at the painting as a whole, it has more water. <laughs> it does have more water. But that's not why he did it that way. Okay, who said he wants the focus to be on the middle? Yay! He wants the focus here. And so where your center of interest is, that's where your darkest darks are going to be and your lightest lights. Look at this. And he's taken it right off the edge of the page. So you, you feel like you're stepping right into that gondola. You know that's what it's about. If he had done this one with the same amount of um, detail, you wouldn't know which one was the focus. Oh, that was Anne, yeah. Okay. And you get the prize this week. I don't know what the prize is, but you win. So things that are not as important, you soften the edges, you don't make hard lines, and you don't make um, accent colors over here. Over here, where's the accent color? That's the next test question. <laughs> I have to remember to that there's a little bit of a time lag in the video, so I have to wait for you all to answer. Where's the accent color in the center of interest? And why is it the accent color? Remember, <laughs> a surprise should be a spritzer from Joe. Absolutely. Anybody would be happy to have Joe for a week. All he does is cook and bring you spritzers, right? Okay, here's the reference photo. I'll even let you zoom in on it. That's the reference photo. It's all backlit and silhouette. So the artist said, okay, there's my photo. I want to paint this. And what he did was he did this, which is a beautiful little painting. 15 by 22, that means it's a half size sheet of watercolor. Okay, so um, Apprentice 1 says the shirt of the gondola man, that's the accent color. <clears throat> Purple Carrot says time to upgrade those spritzers to vodka shots. <laughs> okay, that would make a really interesting stream for me. <laughs> um, I think the purple is a good it's a good it could be a good accent color but the thing is as I see it throughout the painting here I see it back here the purple a little bit the lavender I see it here in the post slightly as a gray I see it here I see it here and I see it over here the one accent color is, okay, for the free vodka shot, where is the accent color? <laughs> I know somebody's going to get it. Where's Sarah Burns when you need her, right? Sarah my friend from Twitch. Okay, I'll tell you, the accent color is red. And it's right there on his face. And the, the reason he chose red is, well, oftentimes you can use red very effectively here. But look at how it stands out and it vibrates with the green because they're complementary colors. So you get that 
tension there, that, that little bit of zing right there on the guy's face. Ha <laughs> ha! No, it's red. To me, the accent color is red because you don't see it really that dark anywhere else in the painting. You see a tiny bit of like red on these roofs and maybe a tiny bit in the burnt sienna, but it's, it's right there, the red on his little hat, right there. That's your one tiny little accent that you put in your center of interest to make it, to make that the focal point, to make it pop. <laughs> no vodka for me. Yeah, vodka is very bad. I don't drink hard alcohol, except once in a while a margarita. I have to make exceptions for margaritas because I love Mexican food. If you're going to eat Mexican food, well, you can either have a margarita or you can have a spritzer with a little salt and lime in it. You don't really need the vodka. <clears throat> and look at here, down here, the green accents on the reflections. I love that. Isn't that fun? Mel Staben. I wonder how old he is now. This is his book, The Figure in Watercolor. Look at this one. Isn't that beautiful? Here's another red accent. Not to mention the hot, the hot pink, the opera in there. Well, that's your subject. <laughs> Oaxaca, Mexico. I think I'm due for a trip to Mexico. I wish this virus would be over so I could go to Mexico City. Maybe I'll invite myself over to my neighbor's house. You know, her mother came to visit from Mexico City and she wasn't able to go home because of the virus. And I think she's been here for months, but um, I'm gonna have to ask her if her mom's still here. I haven't talked to her in a while. But she brought me over some chicken enchiladas one day. Oh my gosh, they were so, so good. Of course, here is one of my favorite paintings of all time, the Chinese. I love the Chinese architecture. Should we try to do this one next week, or you all think it's too complicated? Should we try to do a simple form, like part of it, maybe? Like, maybe just, well, maybe just all of it. <laughs> it's kind of hard to ask beginners to do a whole painting like this. But I really encourage you to try, especially when I talk you through it, because, you know, you can see it from start to finish. Not that I always do it perfectly in a demo, but it gives you a lot of pointers. neighbor is being stuck here as a free visa extension oh 
Yeah, well, actually, I think they all have American passports because um, they have a business here and they, they own homes here and also in Mexico City. And um, so, yeah, I don't know if, her, if their mom has a, um, an American passport or not. She does because she's married. And um, so I'm not sure. I'm going to get my chair and sit down. There we go. Yeah. Oh, are you leaving me? Oh, it's yes, it's time to sleep, Paulina. Well, Paulina, um, thanks for, sh for showing up today and working hard on your painting. You did a great job. And um, keep practicing little boat shapes with washes and reflections. Shadows. I think we all need a trip to Poland because Paulina sent me the most gorgeous photos I'll show you from um, Poland from her little trip outside the city last time. Look at and this one. I think we all want to go there, Paulina. And this, look at this. Doesn't that look cool? I mean, now that one, maybe we should paint this one next week. You know what I'll do is I'll put a few photos on the Facebook page, our Facebook sketch, sketchbook page, and we'll, um, and then we'll, we'll vote for which one we're going to do. And if you took any more Paulina with, um, there's another view of that. This one's nice with the umbrellas and everything. And that big, huge tower. <gasps> this one's really pretty. Okay. And then she did the doorway. I don't want to do the doorway, but that's pretty. I love the pink and green. Those are like two of my favorite colors right now. And these buildings, oh, that's like another view. That's nice. It's got lots of people there with the reflections. That's good for practice. And then here's another one. Look at how cool those buildings are. I really do want to go to Poland. Okay, good night, Paulina. Don't let me keep you up. Paulina, we'll talk on um, on uh, Instagram and in the Facebook chat. Is it okay if I post your painting in there, in our in our Facebook page? You might not want me to. That's okay. But uh, we'll t we'll chat and maybe I'll put some of these photos on there and we'll vote for what we're going to do next week. Ah. Oh. DJ, how are you? What are you doing up so late? How are you? How is your week gone? Sunday night. Are you ready for another week? <laughs> okay. Oh, I can. Okay, good, Paulina. I'll put your painting up there. And then Terry and Ann, if you want to do your sketches this week and post your sketches to Facebook, that's fine. Or just, just send me a picture of them and I can post them. And anybody else that wants to try the gondolas, be prepared. They're not easy. But try to just try to make it fun. And you can you can get there. Where's my other one? Here we go. 
Try to make them fun. Oh, you just woke up. <laughs> okay. DJ, you're going to have a hard time sleeping tonight if you just woke up. We're all good. We've been doing um, some Venice boat studies. Pauline is just go to bed. Ooh, excuse me. And um, we've been painting boats. Well, I sent you the images, um, DJ, on Insta. Do you want to know what Joe calls Instagram? He calls it the same city in spring. Okay. He calls it um, Insta Face because he doesn't like all the technology and social media stuff. So he calls it Insta Face. Good night to Paulina. Hello, everyone from DJ. Well, DJ, now that you're wide awake, what are you going to do? Paulina sent me some new pictures. Wait. Oh, wow. Look at these. Oh, my gosh. Same place, but in the spring. Look at that. Ooh, okay, does everyone see the big white shape going across there? And the, the accent of the church, the spires up there? Now how could you make that into a painting? You'd have to do it very carefully because there's a big shape here. And these little shapes run across the bottom of the page, not in a not in a very good. Um, it has a directional angle. <laughs> You're gonna watch me. You were having a headache, so you slept early, and you've already you already woke up. Okay, DJ, I'm sorry about that. You get a lot of headaches, don't you? Probably from tension. I think you should get a good massage on your neck. Are your headaches in the front or the back? Oh, you're welcome, Anne. Yes, get ready for the next week. Thanks for showing up. And um, good luck this week on your work and your paintings. And um, Post any of your drawings or questions or pictures of setup or anything that you want, and I'll help you. <clears throat> now this one, Paulina, is a winner right here. This is a beautiful photograph. It would make a beautiful painting just the way it is because it has everything in it. I love this one. It's kind of complicated though for a painting because it has a lot of shapes and details and things that you have to be careful of when you're painting. But this is absolutely a winner. I'll have to, um, I'm going to post this one and maybe I'll play around with this this week. But it's way too complicated for. Um, you know, all that drawing and all those shapes and everything. But maybe we'll try sometime. Yeah. Oops. To put it this way. All right. And then, ooh, she's got one more. Wow. Look at that tall tower. Oh, that's a church. Wow, look at that incredible detail on there. How pretty is that? I think I'd really like Poland, actually. 
It's got that European, all that European flair. But interesting architecture. The, these homes all, all have this facade, these, uh, you know, in the front with these pointed, the pointed uh, roofs and the architecture. It's kind of cool. I'll bet the new homes in Poland and the new architecture doesn't look like that, does it? Just like everywhere else. You were having a headache on the front side, but anyway, it's gone now. Okay, good. I'm glad it's gone. <sighs> Headaches are never good. I don't get them, fortunately. Terry, are you still here in the crowd? In the crowd. There's probably like six people here. But, um, hey, I'm up to 96 subscribers. And by the way, DJ and Thunder, um, Thunder, if you're still here too, I'm thinking next week we might do a Zoom meeting so that we can all chat and talk at the same time and see each other. So DJ, do you have Zoom? Can you download the Zoom app on your phone? And then I'm gonna put the Zoom code on um, Facebook and Instagram so you can see it. And then anybody can join in that wants to. I'm just looking to see if I have any new messages. <laughs> oh, you can do Zoom. Good. Okay. Thunder drawer. Thunder drawer, have we met before? You like the picture? Thank you. This is, um, oh, it's just a little practice sketch. I was trying to make some interesting shapes, but it didn't really work out. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, and very glaring and obvious is the disconnection between, well, I guess it's connected here with this shape this lantern but between the top and the bottom if Frank Webb were here he could show me how to do it maybe to make it work but he would do it in a um, a sketchbook study here's the image so it would be interesting to see how Frank Webb would do that maybe I can um, I can send them the picture and, and my attempt and say, Frank, where did I go wrong? I think there needs to be more connection between this stuff and this stuff. Maybe this could go higher. This ends at a, you know, it's also pointing to the lantern. Maybe it should be pointing the other way too, I don't know. I mean, there's so many decisions to make when you're trying to make a painting. Thunder drawer. <laughs> so that's the photo.
Definitely, you need some diagonals. So you have a, a big, huge horizontal going this way, and you have a little bit of thrust going this way, so you need more going that way. I guess he'd probably take this tower and turn it sideways or something and make it go, make it have a shape that way maybe, to make it dynamic. If you read about Frank Webb, like if you read some of his books, and um, I mean, I, I just think it's fascinating the way he comes up with his designs, but um, it's fun once in a while for me to do that kind of, this kind of checkerboard animation stuff. But I, I don't know that I would want to do it all the time. Like, it's fun. It's a fun diversion for me. But this requires a lot of mental thought until you, you know, until you really figure out how to do it. But I think it's fun. And so that's why I was doing this one. Bye. Well, bye, Thunder Drawer. Thank you. I'll keep up the good work. <laughs> Thanks for stopping by. Come and see us again. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess it's time, kiddos. Do you want to see any more illustrations from some of these books? Um, or should we call it a night? I guess we'll call it a night. All right, well, it's been fun, everybody. Thanks for hanging out, and I hope you enjoyed painting gondolas today. I hope you had some fun. And, um... I hope you are encouraged to get out your sketchbook and start painting, drawing, sketching. Maybe I'll leave that out of there. Okay. So take care. Terry, I'll see you on um, afterwards. I'm going to give you a call. And uh, DJ, I'm sorry that... Uh, we're shutting down now that you're on. But hopefully, why don't you try to do a fun drawing like this? A fun little sketch. I sent you a bunch of images, so. Yes, I made it with watercolor. This, this one, wherever I just put it. This one is watercolor. See? It is because I used um, Viridian, or I might have used Thalo Blue, or Viridian. And um, Pyro Red. It's all watercolor. This is the one you're talking about, right, DJ? I'm still trying to figure out who Thunder Drawer is. I'm wondering if that's um, Spicy's son. I can't remember. It looks like gouache because um, the washes are pretty... Yeah, it's kind of heavy for watercolor, but because of the, the Viridian and a lot of the... Yeah, I've mixed it with whatever blue, ultramarine or cobalt, and it's fairly thick, but it's all watercolor. The, the reason it looks so, um, 
The reason it's so thick looking is I, you know, I used a lot of um, pigment to get the values dark and um, also some of the pigments might have a little bit of opacity to it here in the, especially here. Some of, I don't know what I used on this. I don't even remember when I painted it. In fact, I still have it taped down to this board and I can untape it. But um, yeah. You like the purple on the left side so cool? Yeah? DJ, you should look up Frank Webb. He does, he has a very interesting style. Um, he's, he makes all of his paintings out of shapes. And um, what he does is very complicated. <laughs> it's not easy. I was trying to do a version of it here, but it's, um, I, I, the design, you have to have the design plan first, like a really good design plan where you outline your light and dark shapes and then you go from there breaking down the shapes into smaller shape patterns. But you need a large shape pattern to begin with. And that's the painting. See it's on watercolor paper. It's on the back of one that didn't, you know, from a long time ago that I did. Design is everything. You need to have the design down before you start. And I thought I had um, some kind of a respectable design, but it really wasn't, it wasn't, um, obviously good enough. And what I could have done to help myself even further was to do it again in black and white, but I didn't. Jojo, is that you? Where did I put those? Oh, I think they're in here. See this one I did playing around too. No, where did I put it? Oh, it's in the sketchbook. See, I was playing around with the design here, but <clears throat> after looking at this now, after painting it, I realized that my design was bad. It was not a good design. And to challenge myself, maybe I will see that the white shape is lost. The dark shapes are kind of there, but it's not, it doesn't grab you. Like there's too many misshapes. It should be like one large dominant shape and then a smaller shape and then a smaller shape. See this? This does not make a good design plan. And that's where I screwed up. But now I have a better understanding. So I can make a better, and this one's horrible, but I can make a better design plan next time on that. And this one is kind of a traditional thing, so that one's all right. If I was gonna do this again, I might even I don't know. I might move some of this around. Here's my... Like here, this should be open a little more. And then this should come this way more. This should have openness. And then this should come back this way. See, and 
your sketchbook you can play to make it the way you want. DJ, what have you been painting lately? See, that already right there is better because it allows the light to come under here and you have a nice shadow edge there that just fixed that one. Massive, massively better fix on that. And I could probably do more if I wanted. This guy could have another. I don't know if I need that in there, but I can cover it back up. That's why your sketchbook is so useful because that's where you learn and interpret and And try things out. And the sketchbook paper is so um, soft that you can um, manipulate things around without a lot of trouble. Oh, you were trying to paint portrait and color. Oh, and color it in watercolor. Okay. So what did you use to sketch your portrait? Six nineteen. Let me just go just let me just go talk to Joe for one second. I didn't realize how late it's getting, so I just had to check with Joe. It's tough to make skin with watercolor. Oh, DJ, I have a really good book on making skin with watercolor. Do you want me to grab it? I can grab it really quick. I have like one of the best watercolor artists in the United States who does skin color. Her name is... Um, um, hold on, just wait. Let me get the book. I showed you this before. Mary White's painting portraits and figures in watercolor. She like really knows what she's doing and she gives a couple recipes for um, skin color. So um, she signed it even. I picked this up at her gallery in Charleston when I was there a few years back. Now look at her boat and her reflections. We'll have to open this book up and talk about it. Yeah, the colors are hard to make them just right, especially skin color. But look at, she has every kind of skin color in this book. 
So, um, let me just sit down here for a minute. Learning from the Masslers. This is Winslow Homer's painting. Hmm. It is masterful because you see, I mean, it's very simple. Wow. I don't want to read it to you, but... Look at this DJ. Now this is amazing. This is Mary Cassatt self-portrait, watercolor on paper, 23 by 16 inches. It's at the National Portrait Gallery in Washington, DC. I've seen this painting there, but I don't remember it. I've been there. Um, I know I've seen it. It's beautiful. Uh, But let me go to the page where she talks about um, portrait color. Skin color tones. Mm -hmm. Wet into wet. glazes. She does do a lot of glazing. <laughs> My sister says she can't believe I'm still streaming. She just got off the phone with Irene and Kathleen. Well, that's what I'm doing. I know I'm still streaming. Um... DJ, here's what I'm going to do, okay? Because Joe's ready for me to go make dinner. But I'm going <laughs> to... I'm going to um, uh, take a few photographs for you, and I'll send them to you that you can use to help you with your um, doing your faces, your portraits in watercolor of some of the um, tips that I've seen and learned. Look at this. I think she uses a lot of um, I've taken some notes from this book, so I know I'm, I'm just trying to remember which rose color she uses. <clears throat> yeah, um... She charges two neutrals together in a wet, wet into wet wash to get a luminous neutral that's not been overmixed and made dull. See this? She starts with a wet wash and then she charges into it another color like that, starting with the blue and then adding the red to it. And that's how she achieved these beautiful tones. And being very mindful of where to leave your white shapes, right? It sounds so simple, but it's hard to do. But that's exactly what she did there, wet into wet. She says that painting wet into wet is one of the best ways to depict areas that fall into shadow. The colors are more neutral, which is one of the water, which is 
Ouais, voilà. Um, she's she says, how do you paint a shadow gray without making mud? To solve this challenge, I often resort to using two opposite colors and painting them together wet into wet. So red and blue, or red and green, or yellow and blue, whatever. Um, I can achieve a much more luminous result if I resort to mixing than if she had, yeah, than if she had mixed a gray or using gray or whatever. So glazing over, so she paints it red and then she glazes over with green. If the face is too red, tone it down by glazing over with the hooker's green. A glaze will darken a color or give the sensation of a third color. Here I've painted the face using burnt sienna and then I glazed over the shadow areas using ultramarine blue. Very good advice. A succession of glazes can darken the value of an area. Both faces were painted using burnt sienna. Glazes of the same color were added to the face to the right to darken the value in the areas, in different areas. So that's a really good um, practice thing to do. Start with just burnt sienna, save your white area, and then go on top with another glaze and another glaze of the same, getting progressively thicker with your paint with each pass. All right, here she's lifting off. There she's splaying the brushes and there she's scumbling. Using gouache, painting details. Here she is. This is a self portrait. Isn't that a beautiful self portrait? I just love it. It takes a long time for a man to look like his portrait. <laughs> beautiful. Here's the whole, here's the entire portrait. Look at that, DJ. Isn't that gorgeous? She does these. Look at that. She lives not too far from me. Um, in South Carolina. And here's a guy with the cotton, cotton fields, which is, you know, in the Carolinas, that's what they grew here way back when. I wanted to show you this one, too. 